shoulder. When someone has an acute injury, such as a sprained ankle, there's four things we need to remember to do. And we can remember these by the acronym RICE, which stands for rest, ice, compression, and elevation. The first one, rest, is fairly obvious. If somebody has a sprained ankle, we'd want them to rest it. We want them to stay off of it so that they don't further injure it. Now, some therapists say that that first R also could stand for range of motion doing gentle range of motion to the area so that the area doesn't stiffen up too much. The second letter, I, stands for ice. And you can apply an ice pack or apply ice in different ways as a way of helping to keep the inflammation down and to keep the swelling down. Now, when applying ice, it's important to remember the cautions about ice, which we're going to talk about later on, and also to use the ice only for 10 or 15 minutes, just long enough to numb the area. We don't want to cause frostbite. The next letter, C, stands for compression, and for that we can use something like an ACE bandage. And the reason for compression is twofold. One is to help keep the swelling down, and the other is to add more structural support to the area. You can use a figure eight pattern here in wrapping the ankle. And we don't want it too tight. You don't want to cut off circulation. There's also ways of taping for a sprained ankle that can be helpful. So the compression can help. And then the fourth one, letter E, stands for elevation. And if the person sitting or laying down, you want them to have their foot up, preferably above the level of their heart. One of the most important tools we can use in dealing with sports injuries is the use of ice. Ice has a number of very beneficial effects. It can help to decrease swelling. It can decrease tissue damage. It can decrease blood clot formation. It can decrease inflammation. And it'll decrease muscle spasm and pain. Remember that we have this vicious cycle between pain and muscle spasm. But ice works on it in both ways, by decreasing the spasm and the pain. Ice also will help to get more nutrients to the area, speed debris removal, and help to increase strength and promote healing. Now, when we use ice, people will go through four stages with it. At first, they'll feel cold, then they may, may feel burning, and then aching, and then numbness. And when we use ice, we want to use it until an area feels numb. And we want to be careful never to use it too long, never to cause frostbite. There are some cautions with using ice. We don't use ice in rheumatoid conditions. We don't use it in Raynaud's disease. And that's a disease which primarily affects women in which the blood vessels going to the hands and feet can spasm and the hands and feet can turn blue or even black from lack of circulation. These people are very sensitive to cold, so applying ice anywhere can cause this to happen. We also don't use it in people that are allergic to cold. Some people will get hives from the application of ice. We're careful about using it in areas of paralysis or impaired sensation. And I'm careful not to use it over superficial nerves. Two of these that I'm particularly concerned about are the peroneal nerve by the head of the fibula and also the ulnar nerve, where it passes through in between the medial epicondyle and the electronon process, what people commonly call the funny bone here. And another caution with using ice is never to apply it to a client unexpectedly. <gasps> now, for using ice, there's a number of different ways we can use it. Most people think of using a bag of frozen ice cubes. And it's possible to use this. I recommend not putting it directly on the skin because it can be so cold. So it can be used through a towel or through a sheet or clothing, just so it's not directly on the skin. And this can work very well. The problem with this, though, is that it can drip. So there's some other methods that we can use. 
one easy inexpensive method is to take a face towel or washcloth and get it wet and then put it in a plastic bag and put it in the freezer till it's frozen solid and then that can be placed on the area that you want to ice and when it warms up and thaws out it retains the moisture so it doesn't drip that works very well one of my favorite ice packs is to get a rubber ice pack and fill it with three parts water and one part rubbing alcohol the rubbing alcohol will act like antifreeze so it keeps the whole thing from freezing solid instead it will be more like a slush and that way it will mold to an area and it could be used say on an elbow or a knee because it'll mold to the area be careful not to use too much rubbing alcohol because it can allow it to become too cold i find the three to one ratio works best three parts water to one part rubbing alcohol and this also can be used through a towel or through a sheet if it's too cold you can also get the commercial blue ice preparations but i find many of those warm up too quickly and are not that effective for ice therapy another way you can use ice is to use a cup filled with ice and then you peel back top layer of the cup and you can do ice massage where you rub the ice directly on the area and wipe it dry fairly frequently because the tissues will get colder faster if there's not that insulating water on the surface and this works very well sometimes you need to use gloves when doing this because you can freeze your fingers as well now heat can also be used in therapy but there's some cautions with heat i'll tend to use it just for chronic muscle aches for aches that people have had for a long time we never use heat in an acute situation because it can make it worse we're also careful with using heat over any area of paralysis or impaired sensation because the client may not be able to feel it if you're burning them. And we're careful with heat on the legs and on the feet with people that have diabetes because there can be impaired circulation and also impaired nerve sensation. And if you should burn somebody that way, they can get gangrene. Now, when we apply heat, number of different ways we can do it one is to take a towel and soak it in hot water and wring it out and when you go to test it test it on your forearm like you would a baby bottle and if it feels all right then apply it carefully to the client being ready to pull it off quickly if it's too hot you tell me how that so i could pull it off quickly if if it was too hot and then you could put another towel over this to hold the heat in that's one way of applying heat to an area there are some other ways too some people will use electric heating pads you need to be very careful with these if somebody is laying on top of an electric heating pad they're trapping the heat and the heat is continuing to be generated now when you fall asleep you're less sensitive to heat and in clinics over the years i've seen maybe half a dozen cases of people that have had third degree burns from having fallen asleep on top of electric heating pads so we need to be very careful with that and if, with clients in particular if you talk about using heat please caution them about this some of the newer electric heating pads will have a switch that you hold and if you fall asleep you let go of it and it shuts off and those are a little safer but I prefer using methods that will cool down after a while, like a hot towel or a hot water bottle. Another thing that can be used for heat is a bag that's filled with rice. And this can be put in the microwave. We never get it wet, but you can put it in the microwave. And then you can put it over a client's shoulders, over their neck like this. And it can be very comforting, not only from the heat, but also from the weight and then there are chemical heat packs that can be used as well called reheaters and these have a little switch in them when you click them they get hot instantly and these can work very well uh, there also are hydrocolator packs 
and hydrocolator packs you will find in clinics, as chiropractor and physical therapy offices. These are packs that are filled with a type of clay that hold heat for a long time. They're kept in water that's almost boiling, so they have to be wrapped in towels before being put on a client. 